Hello, my name is Amy Wheeler, and I'd like to take you through some assessments for yoga therapy today. And one of the things about assessment of the physical body in yoga therapy is that it's a negotiation, it's a check-in. We're, we're working together to do this assessment. It's not hierarchical, it's not top-down, where I tell him this is what is happening in your body, but rather it's a mutual dialogue where we discover together and, and work together to see what's happening in his body. So one of the first things that we might look at are things like this, where you have to make sure that their, their shirt is on, on correctly, so you're not just looking at material, but you will always ask, may I touch you? So may I touch you today? Yes. Great, you get consent, you get permission. And even then, you don't want to come up from behind and scare somebody and, and start doing things to their body. You'll, you'll want to address them as a human being and make sure that this dialogue and this interaction and negotiation continues to happen, that it's not just me hovering over him, making calculations in my mind. So the first thing I might look at is this distance between ear and shoulder, if we're looking at the neck. And I would compare it to the other side, ear to shoulder. And he's pretty equal here. I don't see a big change. Some people, it's much more like that. That's how they carry around their head. The next thing I might look at is bottom of the neck to outside edge of the shoulder. Bottom of the neck to outside edge of the shoulder. Now, again, making sure that his head is on straight, can you see a difference? For me, there's more space here than there is here. This is a little shorter. So I'm already seeing a little tension on this right side of the neck. Even though this distance is the same, this one is a little shorter. So we already know there's some contraction happening here. Then I might ask him, may I palpate and just gently press, try not to be creepy about it, and see if there's more hardness on one side than the, than the other. And so for him, soft, 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 ropey, hard area right here. Soft, 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 stays a little more soft. So this is definitely, I've got a second confirmation that this is shorter and there's, it's a little bit hard here, right? Now, I might ask him to come and sit in a chair so we can look at him from the side also and that is to say we're going to look at the curve of his neck, which he has a very nice cervical curve. We're going to look at the curve of his upper back. He has a rather flat thoracic curve. Usually people will have a little bit more here and then here. He has a quite, uh, you know, nicely developed cervical curve, but the thoracic curve is pretty flat. That in itself is not a problem. It's only a problem if it causes him pain. He could have a totally flat cervical curve, and if it didn't cause him pain, I'm not going to do anything about it. So we look at things like that. We look at, um, you know, if there's a forward head carriage where they kind of lean forward and jet their chin out like that. That's the position that a lot of us get into, hope it doesn't hurt, um, when we're looking at the computer or the iPhone. And if he was permanently sitting like this, I would ask him, can you bring your head back over your shoulders and can you bring your chin in and find straight, right? So if he wasn't able to do that, that would be a problem. So these are the kinds of things we look at. And then we wanna look at function. So what would happen if I ask you to Flex your neck, tuck your chin down towards your collarbones. He's able to do that. Looks good. You saw how this flattened out, but there's no problem here. Is it comfortable for you to lift your chin up and look up at the sky? Neck extension. You can see the curve come back. He has a nice extension through the front. If this was very tight and contracted through his neck and his pectoral muscles, he wouldn't be able to lift his his chin that high. So he's actually got really nice openness through here and go ahead and flex again. And he also, when he tucks his chin down into flexion again, you can see he's, he's still open here. He can get a, a decent chin tuck. So I don't see a lot of tension on the chest or right in through here. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna have you come over to the second chair. And now we're gonna look at lateral flexion. 
the ability to drop the head to the right or to the left. So as you feel ready, is it okay if I touch you again? Yeah. You can ask multiple times. I would just like you to gently, very gently, start to bring your right ear towards your right shoulder to a place of comfort, not pushing it too far. And I'm just going to kind of make a little measurement here. Like, okay, that's about how far we are. Great. And then come back to center. And let's do the same thing to the left and see how that goes. Okay. Can I go to the right again? I just want to see. I don't want him to struggle. Come back to the left. So can you see, thank you, come back to center. It's a little harder for him to go to the left. And this is where we negotiate and we talk. Did you feel that it was harder to put your head to the left? A little. A little bit. So he even felt it and I could see it. It didn't go as far and he was struggling a little bit more. And then I confirm with him, was that the case? He says, yeah. So now we have another confirmation, a third confirmation that he's got some ropiness, tightness, that he... Um, can't put his head quite as far to the left. And there was one other thing that I can't remember at the moment. Um, oh, it was this, this distance from here to here versus here to here. We're starting to see that there's some congestion and compression in through this side of his shoulder and neck. Now, if that's not causing him pain, I wouldn't do anything about that. I wouldn't do anything and try to give him a practice for that. But if he said, yeah, I'm on the computer a lot and my neck starts to hurt, or sometimes when there's contraction here, we've talked about this in our previous videos, it squeezes things and the disc pops out this way and you actually have pain down this arm. So even though this is the problem, the disc pressing on the nerve causes the pain over here. So if he told me he was having pain from contraction or nerve pain going down the left, then I would say, okay, we need to do something about that for your practice. So do you have any of those issues in, in life where you feel really compressed and contracted over here or on the other side that you feel any kind of nerve pain or numbness going down your left arm? Yes. He does. Co-negotiation. He does. So then we talk about that. Well, what types of things aggravate that? What types of things make that feel better? When does it occur? Is it in the morning? Is it after a long day of work? Is it when you're sitting too much? Is it when you're walking the dog? And we start to figure out the patterns, and this is the co-negotiation part, the patterns of his life, and then correct for the pattern. I don't want to stop him from walking the dog, getting pulled, if that's not the problem. But if the problem is sitting at his desk too long, well, then I can do something about that. So do you know when it uh, happens to, to kind of seize up? And, and is it the right side or the left side? The left, or both? The left side, I get the pain and the nerve reaction in my left arm on the back side of the arm through the pinky, especially when I do standing back bends and do a hold because I can feel it. And the right side does feel tight more often than the left side, but the pain manifests on the left, left side. We didn't know this before we started. That's the funny thing. <laughs> I don't regularly assess George. All right, so I want to do one more test just to kind of fulfill this whole assessment. I'd like you to, if you can, turn your head gently and look over your right shoulder. And again, I can kind of test, all right, that's how far he went to that side, and then slowly back to center. And I'll ask him to gently turn his head to the left. Okay, come back to center. So what I saw that time is he tried to correct and get his head to go further to the left. He was very sneaky. But because his neck is tight on the right side, his head couldn't turn, so he turned his shoulders to get more to make it look like, oh, I can go all the way to the left. But really, because of this tightness on the right side, he couldn't turn as far to the left, so his whole shoulders went with him, which is a sign to me that, again, tightness over here. So hearing what I'm hearing, knowing that he's confirmed what I'm seeing, now we're going to look through his lifestyle and figure out how we can help him correct this problem, the numbness down the left arm, which I didn't even know about, and the tightness on the right, and um, see if we can't build him a practice around that assessment.